Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 7th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I took a little bit of closer look at the Apache vulnerability. That's CVE 2021-4177-3. Remember, that's the directory traversal vulnerability that only affects Apache 2449. According to some of the commit comments in that version, they try to optimize performance of uh, these checks that check whether or not a URL is valid and inside the document root. Well, uh, they were a little bit too efficient here. That's sort of what happened. And then in Apache 2450, which was released this week, they essentially added then again some code to look specifically for the URL encoded dots. The vulnerable version was only available for download for about two weeks from September 15th. So unless you downloaded Apache during that time, you shouldn't worry too much about it. However, if you do run 2449, there is also a possibility that uh, you are subject to a remote code execution vulnerability if you have CGI bin enabled. So it's pretty much exactly the same kind of issue that we had back in 2000, 2001 with IIS. Back then it was the scripts directory instead of uh, CGI, but the similar mechanism that could lead to code execution. Now, by default in Apache, CGI bin is usually not configured these days and also not really used as much. So we have a relatively small population of servers that run the vulnerable version. Even less of them are subject to the remote code execution. Interesting flaw in particular in a popular product like Apache. Totally get how stuff like this can happen. Uh, could have happened to me very well as well. This is fairly old code. Uh, some of the comments in this particular file go back to 1996. And so far this year, we had a couple of uh, critical vulnerabilities in VMware's uh, vCenter and uh, VMware ESXi. Sophos now has an interesting write-up describing some ransomware that specifically goes after ESXi. One thing they note is that the ransomware is being used very fast. Uh, the initial attack happened in the case that Sophos is discussing at 12.30 a.m. and then about Three hours later at 3.40 a.m., uh, the uh, virtual hard disks started to get encrypted. A lot of other ransomware is often uh, sitting around for a couple of days trying to observe the network and trying to find uh, the best and most valuable files to exfiltrate and encrypt. In this case, it just essentially tries to encrypt as quickly as possible pretty much anything it can find uh, via the ESXi shell. In addition to keeping your systems patched, uh, this uh, kind of malware tends to be fairly opportunistic. So make sure that uh, you use strong passwords, two-factor authentication, and please don't provide any access from the internet to any admin consoles. And for those of you doing mobile forensics, really interesting blog post by David Burgess on how to do some more advanced forensics on SIM cards. In this particular case, the question was whether or not a driver of a car did send an SMS message. Well, it turns out that the SMS message that was sent was actually sent automatically, apparently for AT&T at least, but I would imagine other operators do similar things. The phone will occasionally report back what kind of phone you're using using. So for example, if you wondered how a mobile phone operator figured out that you just upgraded your phone and uh, that uh, they basically charged you with that uh, bogus uh, upgrade fee, that's how they figured it out. And uh, there's lots more technical details about how did this kind of analysis uh, on mobile phones. And Google is trying hard to get more users to enroll into a two-step verification as uh, Google calls it. Apparently what they're trying to do here is that users who already have it essentially configured but not enabled will sort of automatically be enrolled into a two-step verification. 
Google, of course, has always been sort of at the forefront when it gets to enroll users into a multi-factor authentication. The Google Authenticator, of course, was part of that push fairly early on, and they are trying to get 150 million more users enrolled by the end of the year. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.